Hi, I'm Andrew Agnello. I'm an SEO strategist here at iAcquire, and today we'll be going over chapter 16 of Joe Paluzzi's epic content marketing book. And this is a really cool chapter because we actually talk about a lot of different types of content. Uh, there's about 30 of them, and so instead of going through every single one and all of his tips, which are really great, I picked out some ones that seem like they'd be more relevant to you because you're choosing to watch this movie on a digital marketing agency's uh, website, uh, and some stuff that maybe you didn't think of that would be relevant to you, uh, but you might want to give it a shot anyway. Starting more with the digital types of content, uh, blogs, we're all familiar with blogs, and I'm sure there's a lot of things that you've been beaten over the head with in terms of things to look for uh, when you're actually building out a blog. Um, but it's good things to remember. You always want to be authentic when you're talking about it uh, and be having a conversation with whatever topic. No one likes just being talked at or written at. Uh, make it more of a conversation. Ask people to engage with it. Engage with other people on their blogs. Uh, Joe mentions making a hit list of 15 or 20 blogs that you go through throughout the week just to read, see what people are doing, uh, interact with their blogs. Maybe they'll then interact with yours as well. Uh, less is always more. Uh, there's a lot of noise out there in digital content. If you can just put really quick bullet points instead of writing out war and peace every time, that'd be great just so you can consume that content really quickly. Uh, he, he shared a really good statistic about how apparently 85% of corporate blogs have only five or less blog posts. And that's a Great example of how you don't want to use your blog for delivering content. It's not really an area just to push out press releases, and that's probably what those five are. Uh, so make sure you're engaging with your audience. Uh, another great point that Joe makes is you want to do, uh, promote influencers uh, as well. So find people in your space that are real thought leaders. You can feature them on it, mention them, maybe even do a Q&A with them. That'd be really great as well. Moving on to other uh, digital uh, content uh, forms uh, are white papers, which is a great way to position yourself as well as your organization as a thought leader and posing some problem that you went through or some kind of expertise within the industry. And when you do this, you want to make sure that you're doing it in a format that's easily shareable, not just digitally, like through Twitter or through LinkedIn, but you could download it maybe onto your iPad or your Kindle and view it as a PDF, possibly make it a digital magazine, even make it more available for print so you can print it out and hand it out at a meetup or some kind of professional event. Uh, video is very important, obviously. And he talks about going beyond talking heads. Obviously, that's beyond whiteboard videos because we need whiteboard videos to learn about these cool things to do. So filming different videos, either like around the workplace or changing the settings, not doing the same shot every time is really good. So it's not just a talking head like me talking at you in front of a whiteboard. Uh, it's also really important not to stress perfection in your videos. Obviously, not everyone's going to have a dedicated person on their team to do video. But if you're going to stress anything, make sure your audio is really good. Don't stress the visual as much. Uh, another big uh, form of digital content would be e-learning. And this is something that you really want to make sure you're adapting it to your audience and who's going to actually be consuming this and learning. So is it a matter of having videos, having a series of different interactive kind of tutorials to go through? And you know, you really gotta figure out what do the people who wanna learn about it, how do they wanna learn about it? Not everyone learns the same way, not everyone learns the same way across all different industries. Uh, make sure everything is engaging. You know, going through Google Analytics training, there's a lot of uh, quizzes as you go through it, ways you can uh, test what you've been learning to make sure you're doing it, uh, just so it's not just reading something or watching something straight through. A lot of the other things that Joe talks about are really interesting, some stuff that you may not think about. Uh, doing something like a comic book or a comic strip could be cool. Uh, at iAcquire, we have Gary and Cogswell, where they go on their SEO-related uh, adventures. So it's something a little different than just reading a blog post. Uh, holding webinars and webcasts is a great way to promote yourself as a thought leader, getting people involved in your brand. Uh, issuing case studies is always really popular as well. Uh, if you have the resources and can say determined enough, holding a regular podcast would be great. Just make sure you're going to be consistent with putting it out either weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, uh, and sticking to that. No one likes to start listening to a great podcast just to hear it all of a sudden drop off uh, and not continue. 
So in addition to digital, uh, Joe makes a real, some really good cases about why print is still a great medium for delivering your content and creating that content. Uh, it's not a declining industry as many have declared it as TV uh, isn't dead. Oh, nor is SEO, regardless of how many times we've heard it in the media over and over. Uh, yes, the internet has made uh, some of the information we normally consume through print more accessible and more convenient, mm. but print still has its uh, benefits to it. Uh, it's attention grabbing. You don't normally think to read about some more of the more newer things going on, especially in marketing in print. Uh, so by putting your content out in print, it could definitely make you stand out in a way. Uh, customer acquisition is also easier. If you already have a mailing list, say you're an e-commerce company, you've got your customers' addresses. Send them a postcard. Send them out uh, your latest uh, company information. You already have that information. You don't have to go out and buy that contact info or invest in segmenting different markets. Uh, it excites people. Uh, I know my inbox is pretty crazy, but my mailbox isn't. So I actually get something in the mail, it's kind of like, oh, let me look at this. So take advantage of that, that maybe there's less noise now in a lot of your target market's uh, physical mailboxes, and you can really stand out that way. Uh, it also shows a thought leader status in a way. If you're going through the trouble of writing a book or actually putting out an article that's in print, it shows that you've invested a lot of time to align with all of uh, what's required to get something into print, get it distributed to everybody. And so it really will make you stand out from an expertise or reputable uh, standpoint from your competition. Um, and also, you know, what's old is new again. So everything's pretty cyclical. Uh, as people moved away from print, everyone's doing digital. It's pretty crowded, so it's a great way to get back into it. And there's a lot of different things that Joe talks about in the book in terms of content. Uh, some stuff that's a little uh, a bit more niche for certain markets uh, or industries, but it's a great thing uh, to look at. So definitely check out Epic Content Marketing. Oh.